Good morning, everyone. This is the number 10 of our sermon series on Christian living. And if you have your Bibles with you, you can turn with me to 2 Peter chapter 1. 2 Peter chapter 1, verses 1 to 11. And we're going to look at it in portion of verses. And together, we would, I'd like us to really get into the passage itself. I don't even have a fill in the blank this morning. I simply gave you out a sentence and if you have a pen, whatever you would like to write on and whatever is God is simply talking to you or telling you, it will be good to write it down. But I'd just like to give you because Second Peter, <laughs> Pastor Ruel, I think two Sundays ago, did a very well um, introduction why First and Second Peter was written. And I'd like us to really look at the beginning of Second Peter and really take it to our time. Because if we will take it to the time of Peter himself, there's a bit of a change of challenges that we go through. And that's why when you read the Word of God, it's true yesterday, it's true today, and it will still true tomorrow. So let me present to you 2 Peter chapter 1, verses 1 to 11. Growing in faith. As I've said before, this is not a title that I thought of myself. This is just simply a title from the New Living Translation that I adopted, but this morning, my goal is to give you at least two questions in mind. Two questions that we can find answer from the Word of God. And the two questions are this. Are you growing in your faith? It's a good question because when we come to a point where we think we have grown and we do not need to learn anymore, we're in trouble. Because daily and for life, we really need to get into the learning and growing in our faith. And the second one is, what are biblical features of someone like me, like you, who's growing in faith and we seem to have an understanding of what to do, but sometimes we need to be reminded Here's what I'm trying to say. You know when you have a direction to go in life? 2 Peter chapter 1, 1 to 11. It's almost like you got T-boned in an accident. Bam! Because it's making sure that you are attentive to where you're going. This is 2 Peter. And so if you have a direction in life, it's something that goes you, that tells you to, whoa, I needed to pay attention to this. Because in growing in faith, we need to understand it from the biblical perspective. Someone said this. I think it's, uh, I think it, the origin of this is C.S. Lewis, but Rick Warren says it as well. But it goes this way. Time, time, and pressure, and pressure changes caterpillars Two butterflies. Sand in time, in time and pressure, changes into pearls. Time and pressure changes coal into diamonds. And this is a lot of time and a lot of pressure together. And it's creating a beautiful caterpillar to butterfly, sand into pearls, and coal into diamonds. And the authors who said this, it's possible that we are being changed by God the same way. Time. Pressure. And so, when you look at 2 Peter... It's very important that you regard this highly because he is very careful 
even from expressing it to who he is. Look at the letter. This letter is from Simon Peter. It's very rare that you will see in the New Testament that they put their name to what they are writing. A slave and apostle. This is two words that got my attention that I'd like to express to you this morning. A slave and apostle of Jesus Christ. I am writing to you who share the same precious faith we have. Now you can see why I want to connect this passage into our life today. This faith was given to you because of the justice and fairness of Jesus Christ. So, it will be good to give it a thought. We, saw, we see a lot of injustice. We see a lot of unfairness. But Peter said, this faith was given to you because of the justice and fairness of Jesus Christ, our God, our Savior, and Savior. Verse 2, may God give you very, very, it's, it's one of those that grabs your attention. Why more and more? I thought when you're given grace, that was it. But Peter said, may God give you more and more. That's English. If you will read this into its original language, it's more, more, and more. You know when Tagalog says, madaming, 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 madaming beses. That's a lot. And that's what Peter is saying. As you grow in your knowledge of God and Jesus our Lord, this is our growing of faith. But as I've said, Look at the rare combination. These days, you will not find a slave and apostle at the same category. Because a slave is someone who serves. A slave is someone who does the lowest of job description. And so, if you're looking at a slave, it simply means service. And the apostle simply means more than authority, it's responsibility. So can I take that to our time? If your name has a description of a worship minister, then you're a slave. If your name is a follower of Jesus Christ, then you're a slave. You see, we have a tendency to put on authority on the first one and we forgot the responsibility. I'd like to take this to family of today. If you're a dad, more than the authority, it's your responsibility. And then here's the hard part. You're a slave of your family. Are you getting this? This is something that we do not readily accept. And that's why your life has a direction. Second Peter will T-bone you to the side and rattle you and say, whoa. I needed to hear this because Second Peter, Peter himself is saying, I am an apostle, but you notice how we change it? He said, I am a slave and an apostle. You see, when you were an apostle of his time, this is first century Christianity. And so it's like the Pope coming in. And then he picks up the mop and started mopping. That's the, that, that's the picture of what we are getting. And so the question I would like to ask you this morning is, in your growing in faith, does it come to you that your responsibility is not the primary thing, but it's your service? You see, when the Bible when this gives the words justice and fairness that comes from God, we rarely see this and receive this in this day. Because we always say it's so unjust and it's so unfair. And that's why the verse goes more grace, more peace. Because we have a tendency 
to really get rattled and no longer stand in our faith. So, do you pray this way? Do you walk this way? It's a good question to ask. You see, if you wanted grace just for a one-time kind of event in life, it will not last. Here's what I'm trying to say. More and more is actually every day. More and more, for some of you, needs it every minute. More and more, for some of us, needs it on a daily basis. When you're about to lose it, see to it that you are going, I'm still growing in faith, and Lord, I'm about to shake down and give up, but I need more of your grace. I need more of your peace. Please say amen. amen. That's who we are. The only way you can, you can, I will speak this morning about measuring your faith, but I think we're measuring it the wrong way because what we are being told is this is the direction we are going to in life, but God is asking, you need more of me. So a good answer to the first question, are you growing in your faith? The answer should be yes, because I need more of God. Service, responsibility. And we need to really get this into our mind. Do I really look at my position and say, I am the? Or it's a responsibility because when Jesus himself came to earth, Philippians chapter 2 will tell you he came as a God but not consider himself as a God. He considered himself as a servant. So slow of a servant that he considered himself like a criminal dying on the cross for you. So he came to earth not so you could bow down. We need to bow down. He is Lord. But He came so that He can wash your feet. He came so that He can die for you. So that you will no longer do that. Slave. But listen to Peter. By His divine power. No power like this is what He is saying. God. Are you getting this? Has given us everything we need. You believe that? That's not my words. That's Peter. By his divine power, meaning he is all knowing, he is all powerful, and then he has given you everything you need for living a godly life. And then Peter said, We have received all of this by coming to know him. There's the marking words that you need to put in your Bible. The one who called us to himself by means of his marvelous glory and excellence. And because of his glory and excellence, he has given us great and precious promises. These are the promises that enable you to share his divine nature and escape. Here we go. The world's corruption caused by human desires. The mature, courageous follower of Christ. This is something we really need to go after. So rather than just growing in your faith, can I ask you this morning, have you been or ha, at least you have been in a journey of, I am a maturing and courageous follower of Christ. Why? Because God has given me everything that I need for godly living. I received it. When you receive it, it's not something that's not in your mind. It's not something magical. You receive it by knowing Him. I think we're being too, I 
think we're, we're, we're highly trivializing how to be growing in your faith and how to be a mature, courageous follower of Christ. You want to do it? Know Christ. Know Christ. If I ask you this morning, how much do you know this Jesus Christ? It's a good question to ask because the basis of living a godly life, according to Peter, is who God is. His glory and excellence, you can know it. His great and precious promises, He shared it to us so that we can escape the world corruption caused by human desires. I don't think I need to explain that more. But we really need to get into that. I need to grow up. And to grow up, I need to know Him. Because His, oh my goodness, His glory and excellence. Are you getting that? His glorious feature and His excellence, He have shared with you. And this promise Share so that I don't want to put people who are publicly expressing I don't want to faith my faith anymore. But lately, you will see a lot of pastors, a lot of worship ministers who have gone astray in saying, This is not me. But let's not judge them this morning. I want to put you on spot. I know you and I have mornings like that. As a pastor, there's a Sunday that I'm growling just to go to church. Urgh, church. And we have to really look at each other this morning because there's something in you that makes you not want to do what God wants you to do. Right? That's a natural you. But God is saying, I have given you what you need. <clears throat> and we need to really go there because Peter said, look at verses 5 to 8. In view of all of this, so now you know what's happening. Make every effort to respond to God's promises. That's big. Because you cannot just go, Lord, I love you. this family. I hate these guys. I don't like this. It's just not driving. You need to really go, I love you, God, and I'm having a hard time loving this guy. So love him for me. And while you're doing that, use me. It's something that we know, and that's what Peter is saying. Look at how he says it. Supplement. Supplement. That means we don't have enough. Supplement your faith with a generous provision of moral excellence. There you go. There's the first word. Moral excellence. So you cannot just be knowing God and say, I need to flirt with my former high school girlfriend. Are you with me? Are you getting this? I think we have very subtle, subtle, and we think it's, I think we're minimizing this knowing God. That when he says he is holy, he is holy. And it's not just maybe I can be holy too. It's in or out. And that's supplementing your faith with the generous provision of moral excellence. You cannot just say, I love God, and do something foolish with the body. And then it says knowledge. Did you notice how Peter is doing it? He always connects it. And the connection, I want you to notice it. The connection is almost an action word. He said, knowledge with self-control. 
Well, it's very important. It's knowledge with self-control is knowledge that you show in your character and in your habit. So, your knowledge of God isn't just something that you talk about. It will show in your character. It will show in your habit. And then it says, self-control with patient endurance. When you are practicing self-control, here's what you need to do. I am, am I better than yesterday? Yesterday, when my wife tools tells me, push the cart in, Cost uh, in Costco. Uh, I'm tired. I'm preaching tomorrow. That was last week. Yesterday, in my mind, I practiced this. I drove her where she wants to go. But in my mind, I wanted to go, I'm preaching tomorrow, you know. You see how this thing can be real? And I don't know why we do not do it every day. But self-control with patient endurance is... I can't do this by myself. God, more grace, more patience, more of you. And I don't know why we fight it that way. We fight it with rage. You don't understand me. Well, it's not about you. And then it says, patient endurance with godliness. When you are actually patient, this is so hard. And that's why I said this is a T-bone accident in your journey in life. When you are, when you are patient, you're already driving, you want to go to Costco, you want to serve the wife, you want to do it well. It says you have to do it godly. So you can't just be, I'm being patient, you know? Are you getting this? Did you know we could be an apostle who is saying a lot of things? But we're so powerful with our authority and we forgot to be godly. Parents, you need to be watchful as well. I think we're being too godly without patience as well. We cannot just go to our children. You did it again because they will do it again. And we know this. We just need to go the way God forgave me is the way I am forgiving my loved ones. It's a hard thing to do because it repeats and it repeats and it's all over again. But you cannot be patient without godliness or you cannot be godly without patient. patience. And then it moved on. Godliness with brotherly affection. Here we go. When you are being godly, as a person of authority, Peter is saying, he is practicing this with brotherly affection. But can I use that in our time today? Young people, listen to me. If you cannot act on godliness, do not do the brotherly affection hug. Let me be brute this morning. We men should be careful with the touch, with the hug, without godliness and brotherly affection. This world, this community, this city, our time today, Another pastor failed in his moral excellence, got fired from the CMA because we are not being careful. We talk about sin when sin is already happening. This morning, let's talk about it before it happens. We need just to be watchful of this because without brotherly affection, covert and done in love, we are bound to fail. The more you grow like this, 
the more productive and useful you will be in your knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. I don't need to explain that anymore, but read it carefully. The more you grow like this, like what? The more productive and useful you will be. I don't know if we are so big with this, we forgot all of this. And we just need to look at it very well. Let me continue on. But those who fail to develop in this way, they are those who will fall in the cracks. They will just, I don't know what happened. I don't know why I'm still this way. But those who fail to develop in this way are short-sighted or blind. Not my words, Peter. And this is what he said. Forgetting that they have been cleansed from their old sins. Wow, there's a possibility that I have forgotten that I have been cleansed, forgiven from my old sin. So growing in faith will not come from easy and comfort zones. That's just my words. Trying to express it. But this morning, allow me to read to you a thought that I've just written down. Carefully. The old sins, the old me, and the old you. We got saved. Somehow, somehow, we sometimes want to get away with little things in life. Maybe there is gray Christianity. Maybe it's not right and wrong. Maybe I could lie. White lies. Maliit lang naman. Sin the sin. Because the new me and the new you calls for, Lord, I'm repentant. Lord, I'm surrendering. Lord, I'm submitting to you today. Because yesterday, it did not end well. We need to be like this. We, we need to call that ourselves are so sinful. So Lord, I'm repentant again. I'm surrendering to your Lordship again. And I'm submitting that I'm a pastor, but I'm a slave. You see, this is nothing easy. As I continue, I wrote this down personally. Lord, my pride and my ego... Don't I know who I am? Really? What about you? What about me, Ben? My name is Jesus, who died for you. So Ben, New Life Alliance Church, daily, daily, look up to God consistently, Consistently is regularly and steady and continuously. Never let go of a day. But you have to do it constantly as well. Without variation and without deviation, you cannot just bypass a day without the Word of God. Because we cannot. We are, we're so capable of forgetting. But here's what I was talking about. You see... When you keep on failing, you have a tendency to measure yourself and you say, Man, I have failed growing in faith. Well, you're doing it wrong as well. Because the Bible is very clear. The measurement, can you write this down? The measurement is the accomplished, perfected, and completed life of Jesus Christ. So when you see yourself as a failure in growing in faith, you need to look at Christ in what he has done. And he said, I've done it for you, Ben. You need to be beware that the word of God is sometimes T-boning you or smacking you. And you need to say, Lord, thank you. I needed that. You need to understand that there's no middle walk when it's with God. There's no half-hearted. You're either in or you're out. But while you are having a hard time, the best is still expected. Did you get that? That's a hard thing to do. 
see, this is Christianity. There's no middle walk. There's no, maybe I could just do it half-heartedly. You're either in or out. But even if that's your situation right now, God is saying, Ben, I'm still expecting the best from you. But God, I can't even do it myself. I need to give you an example on how to come up with this mindset. I call this second wind. Listen to me carefully. In our church, we go to here at 10.30 to 12.15 to worship. It's called our worship celebration. I think we're forgetting the fact that what 12.30 to 3 o'clock is a celebration of a celebration of life on life. That's when we eat together. That's when we sit down together. So for those of you who watched telenovels late last night, you will go and wake up and drink a lot of coffee so you can wake up at 10.30 to 12.15 listening to this guy and the other PhD guy. Or the clear-headed guy. And then you will coffee yourself, you will make sure you're attentive, by, but by lunchtime, someone shared to you a problem and you're so tired, you don't have, you're no longer in the mood. I'm sleepy. By the way, I didn't like what Nina cooked, I didn't eat. Are you getting me? You know why I said this? Because somehow, our church could really be Something that we give importance of, that we come prepared with our offering since Monday, that we have the best energy today. If you can do it, two o'clock playing PS4, there's a test tomorrow. If you're okay with that, God is saying, no, I'm asking for your best. I'm asking for your best. And that's why Christianity is something that they make fun of. Because we give this lousy time, lousy efforts. And God can see that. And this is the greatness of the God that we serve. Despite of our lacking, He says, Ben, today I'm giving you more grace and more of me. And more peace. Do it in my name. So dear brothers and sisters. This is Peter to us. Work hard. To prove that you really are among God. Has called. Can you still hear it? Listen to it. Ben. Ben. I've given you enough for godly living. Ben, I have forgiven you. Ben, I have cleansed you. Ben, I have given you more grace and more peace. Ben, I love you. Ben, I'm still here. And God, I'm sorry if I don't give you an attention anymore. Go ahead. With this direction in life, T-bone me with an accident so I can get attention again. And then he said, you're chosen. Among the billions, God placed you in front of him and said, you're mine. Do these things and you will never... Please read the two words. What's the two words? Read it well. Fall away. This is why people are falling away. We have forgotten who called us. We have forgotten who chose us. Amen? Do these things and you will never fall away. Then God will give you a grand entrance into the eternal kingdom of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Bow down with me.